Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, debugging Bitcoin. Um, of course, if you want to contribute to Bitcoin, uh, there are a lot of conceptual things that you have to understand in order to do that. And most of the talks um, you hear today and tomorrow are about that. Um, but then also actually writing code and or fixing stuff, um, you will also have to learn some things that are more on a practical level. Um, and um, yeah, that's, that's basically what this talk is about. Um, because I think even if you have a very good um, understanding already of how Bitcoin works on a conceptual level, then you can still run into these things and they can kind of um, block your process. So, welcome to Bitcoin. Uh, you want to contribute. Um, you are a junior Bitcoin core developer and uh, yeah, you have to basically take your first steps and uh, that's what this talk is for. Um, we're going to talk about first uh, preparations that you're going to need in order to um, log or uh, debug stuff from Bitcoin. Uh, and then we're going to talk about some tools and uh, also tools for SegFaults. Um, I'm just going to touch on briefly. So first of all, some uh, hints on preparations. Um, first of all, I um, really would uh, recommend you to install Ccache. Ccache is a tool that uh, is caching uh, things that you have already compiled uh, and that's going to uh, speed up your process a lot when you're um, developing. Uh, so um, yeah, you, you just don't waste a lot of time on it. Another thing that you should definitely do is uh, to um, set compiler flex and set optimizations to zero because otherwise uh, the debugging tools that I'm going to show you are not really going to work for you. They are going to work technically, but you are not going to be able to recognize your code from it. Um, I think I have a little bit of an example of that later in the slides. I'm going to hint to it, but just make sure that you're going to do these things uh, when, you, when you follow the, the further steps. So we're going to start with logging and uh, you can, of course, find all the information that I'm going to talk about uh, by Googling or by reading readme files also on Bitcoin. Um, and something that you're going to see recommended when you want to um, lock something out of the code is this function logprintf. And let's say you maybe want to, go, want to start out and just try to lock something because you just want to see that whatever you, you're editing in the code is actually doing something. So you're, um, you put this in logprintf and uh, you, you compile, it works. Uh, you run Bitcoin D and um, it, it should r run by this, this point where the logprintf is. Um, and uh, you also have seen that um, this is logging to debug.log file, um, but actually it's not working. So you can see I'm grabbing for these, for these uh, add signs and nothing is coming out. So um, there's actually a problem here that you should be able to see from the slide here. Does anyone see what, what the problem is? Need to be a test. True. Um, so the problem is we're running rec test, which you probably do if you're, if you're local on your local environment. But this debug log file is actually the mainnet debug log file. So yeah, this is, this is like the, the first hint of the, the main message of my talk is that there are different environments, different uh, contexts of um, that you have to be aware of when you're developing locally. And um, it's, it's just going to happen to you that you're going to be in the wrong context. Or you're just going to forget where you are. You just, when you grab for something or so, you do, you do some fuzzy matching or so, um, you're just going to miss something and you're not going to see it. And then you have to just check again, okay, am I in the right, am I in the right folder or am I in the right file or, or something like that. So if you're running something in a rec test, then here, as Ross said, um, you need to find the debug log file that is in the rec test folder and then you are actually going to see the output. So then moving on to unit tests, I'm actually going to go through um, for logging and for debugging first running, running the file yourself, then uh, running unit tests, then running functional tests. So moving on to unit tests now. In uh, unit tests, um, you cannot use logprintf. Um, instead, uh, unit tests are running with uh, boost and um, there you have to use these uh, boost test messages and um, there's really not that much more to it. Um, you 
Oh, well, one more thing that's um, to it, you cannot run the normal Bitcoin D. There's actually another, um, another executable that is compiled just for the unit test, and that's uh, test Bitcoin up there. And you have to run that with log level all, then you're going to see all these messages. You can see that here as an example. Um, you use, you, there, are other, there are other examples of these um, boost, um, of these boost test messages. Um, you, can, you can do this with asserts and so on. Um, but um, yeah, they are going to come out in the, in the output um, as you can see there. Then logging from the functional test, um, especially if you already have some uh, experience with Python, this is really, really simple. Um, this is not a compiled language, so um, you, you don't have to think about so many steps there. Um, you just use this uh, self-log.info um, uh, method, and uh, you actually see this all over the, all over the functional tests. Um, so this is probably not going to be hard for you. Another thing that you have to think of, though, is you have to run the test directly and not through the, the test harness, uh, testrunner.py, because the test runner is actually not printing out um, these, uh, these messages. Now moving on to uh, debuggers. Um, how many here know what a debugger is? Okay, most people, so I'm just gonna through, run through it very, very quickly. Um, most people use uh, um, debugger like GDB or LLDB. You're maybe using it in, a, in, a, um, in an IDE or something like that. But um, like these are tools that, that everyone can use and um, that I've seen being used very commonly by, by Bitcoin developers. So um, with these, you start an executable through the debugger, you set breakpoints, and then as you run the code and the code runs into these breakpoints, then you can inspect variables and step through the code. So this um, is very straightforward if you know how to use GDB or LLDB um, when you use the Bitcoin D variable, uh, uh, the Bitcoin D executable directly. You just run Bitcoin D that you've built with LLDB. I'm using a Mac um, for Mac. The LLDB is definitely better, um, but you can use GDB. GDB is better on Linux. Um, depends on your system, and the two are actually very, um, very similar. Um, just uh, minor differences in the in the calls and actually when you're inspecting stuff. Um, so you can set a breakpoint here in in any file. You can also um, specify function names or something like that. Um, and then you run the file with the parameters that you, that you need, and um, then you're going to see the results that you, that you want. Um, it kind of works the same way for um, unit tests as well. Um, the only thing, again, that you have to remember is uh, that you use the test Bitcoin um, executable and not the Bitcoin D. Um, and then here you can see it um, in the example. You set a breakpoint at some file where you're going to run into, and uh, then you run it, and um, yeah, it's going to stop at the breakpoint. So functional test, the logging was, at least from my mind, the, the easiest. So then um, this is also probably also going to be very simple. Um, running a uh, functional test and then uh, running a debugger is pretty simple. You uh, use PDB. Um, that is, uh, that is uh, basically the, the same as GDB, but um, yeah, working for Python. So um, you put this import PDB and then PDB set trace into the code and it's going to stop there. Um, and so I basically had understood all of these things that I have told you now, um, but then I had this idea that I also wanted to inspect the C++ code that was being executed by the functional test. And so this is where it gets like really interesting. This is like the, the most interesting thing I can teach you today, I think. It's like, how do you get into um, debugging the C++ code, actually? So the problem is here that the functional test, which is uh, Python code, is launching and executing Bitcoin D instance. And um, this uses the temp folder as its data there. And it's kind of hidden away from you. So you cannot really, you cannot really in interact with it in an easy way. So um, to actually get in there, you need something like a game plan. 
and we're going to go through that game plan. Um, so first of all, what you need to do is need to run the test, the functional test that is going to basically then um, start up the Bitcoin D process for you. But then you have to stop this test. And for that, we're going to use PDB. And um, then we have to find the Bitcoin D process that we were running with, um, with the functional test and then attach to that process using LLDB. And then we have to, um, we have to let that uh, process continue and then it's going to run to that breakpoint. Um, one thing that we're also going to need to change is the timeout um, because functional tests have a timeout of 60 seconds and that's just, um, yeah, it's not going to give you a lot of time to, to debug actually if you, if you keep that in place. So that's something that I would like to show you here as a demo. Okay, so first of all, up here you can see um, I've changed the uh, RPC timeout to, uh, from 60 seconds to 600. That should give us a little more time. And um, then down here, uh, what we're looking at is the uh, get blockchain info test, get blockchain info, probably everyone who has ever run uh, um, a node for themselves and then check that you're actually syncing fine. Um, that is uh, the call that you've probably run. And I have just put in the PDB set trace here. And so that's what we're going to run first. So we've uh, run into the set trace from PDB and now I can Oh, sorry. It looks better for me. <laughs> huh? Is it okay? Is that okay? Okay. Start it again. And now we have to know what process we actually want to attach to. Uh, and this is kind of critical because uh, some tests are running more than one uh, instance. And so how we can find that out is um, if you look at the tests um, on self, you have this array of nodes. And we only have one node in this test particularly, but if you have several ones, then you need to know which node you actually want to attach to. And so then you can look at process.pit, and that's going to give you the number of the pit that you want to inspect. I'm going to take that number and put it in here. And then LLDB is now attaching to this to this process in particular. And um, so now we can set the breakpoints. So first, uh, this process is not running now both from PDB and from, uh, from LLDB side. So I can set these breakpoints on it now. And here, then I can let it continue from, uh, from the LLDB side, but it's, not, it's still not really running because uh, PDB is still blocking it, but we can unblock it here as well. And now we've run into that, into that point here. So here now we can, we can inspect this um, and I'm not going to show you everything, all the calls that you can do with this.
But um, yeah, so now you can interact with this with LLDB. And so what's really neat about this is um, that oftentimes you have these like complicated setups of, of things that you want to inspect um, with Bitcoin and you don't want to like run through these by hand all the time. And so typically you can write then a functional test, uh, which is going to be useful for you anyway, which is you're going to need anyway. And then you can have the functional test always bring you to, to that setup point basically, and then inspect the things that you need to. And this is the wrong window. All right, um, so this was maybe not super fluent, so I'm just going to repeat again what I did. Um, first of all, we ran into this uh, PDB set trace. Um, then we jumped into the PDB um, breakpoint, and uh, we went over to the, um, here to LLDB. Uh, we attached to the process with LLDB, set the breakpoint, then let the process continue, then let the process also continue in PDB, and then we run it to the breakpoint with LLDB and we can work with it. So as I said in the beginning, my main point here was when you're logging and debugging with Bitcoin, especially in the beginning, there are lots of different contexts that you have to be aware of. You constantly have to check if something is not working that you're maybe not in the right file or not in the right context and that you um, basically use the right, the right tool for the job. So this is another overview. I'm not going to, over, uh, to go over it in detail again um, because um, something else that I have to, uh, prepared at the end um, that I'm going to give you where you can check that stuff out for yourself. Um, one more thing that I'm not going to talk about in detail is um, if you're facing sec faults, um, I am actually not an expert on these tools yet. Um, but uh, something for you to consider as well. Um, you can use uh, core dumps if you're facing sec faults um, for that to work. Um, you, um, at least on macOS, you have to specifically enable them using uh, this ulimit um, call. Then you run the program and then you will find these core dumps in your slash cores um, folder. And uh, you also have to make sure that you clean up afterwards because these are huge files and you can, you can uh, cl um, clutter, your, clutter your disk with it pretty quickly. Another tool is Valgrind where you can uh, run uh, leak checks with it and this uh, works kind of similar to LLDB. So I promised I was gonna give you something at the end and um, here's basically a short link to a disk file that I've created. Um, this has uh, basically everything that you've seen here in this, in this talk and, and even some more information on it in like one, one, one list file um, because I know it's maybe hard to, to like grasp everything in this talk and um, uh, actually you're going to need these tools when you, when you actually run into the problem. So, um, most of this information you can also find in readme's in Bitcoin, but it's kind of um, scattered um, in over over five or six different readme files in core. So um, yeah, maybe check this file out, um, read through it, see if it's helpful for you, and um, happy to take your feedback. Um, any questions? No. Uh, enable debug, you mean in the compilation yeah. step? Well, it's also just turning off optimizations, um, but I think, I think it's not setting 0 I think it's, um, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what it says. I think it's, it's, it's also working fine, but uh, some people mentioned that they were having problems with it, and I also remember it wasn't working for me initially, so um, I just um, then found out that setting 0 is is the, the cleanest version or the, the cleanest way to, to actually disable optimization. So that's what I'm using, but it's, it's basically doing the same thing. Thanks.